time has come. The embargo has lifted and all sorts of goodies are flooding out into the realm of chaos. Other than showcase a ton of campaign play, I'm going to take a different approach, giving you guys guides, lore breakdowns, competitive analysis, all, you know, all sorts of tools to make the best of your time in the Serpent and the Warlock. So today we're going to break down the lore of each and every of the new regiments of renown for the Skaven. And some of these are obscure kind of homebrewed concoctions, but they're at least, you know, they, they kind of have a minor footing in their respective lore. So today we'll talk about the Skaven, and in our next video we'll go into the Lizardmen. We'll start at the proverbial bottom here and just work our way up the totem pole. Clan Rats being the obvious first choice with Clan Vulcan's Tail Slashers. Now, Clan Vulcan is one of the Skaven Clan Rats from Fire Mountain, which is along the world's edge mountains. This is one of the units we talked about in our prediction video, but I'm very excited to see these guys in the game. You know, Vulcan's banners are these kind of sick volcano motifs, and their backstory is pretty cool as far as being just like overly uh, obsessed about arrow anything <laughs> but as far as in-game stats go for 175 points more than their standard clan rat variation you're getting almost 10 more weapon strength mouse over that um, but 10 more weapon strength uh, melee defense and leadership and it's it's like i think it's actually eight more melee defense and like seven more leadership but i'm just saying you get about 10 but with a five point bump to melee attack as well the big thing here is that you gain access to flaming attacks there we are. Um, flaming attacks. And in addition to that, 70% fire resistance. So this makes for a, you know, it's, it's a niche pick. Uh, they'll be great against any undead faction or maybe against tree spirit wood elf builds. But the problem is that no one really focuses on clan rats to do the bulk of their damage in their army. Uh, the point could be argued the same for the warriors of Dragonfire Pass for the dwarves. In fact, these clan rats have more weapon strength and melee attack than their dwarf counterpart, which makes sense as, you know, dwarves are a more defensive army. And these are best to use in matchups against the undead or even in normal campaign engagements to kind of flank around using their higher damage to do support or supplement the rest of your forces. But let's talk about another unit that's straight from the uniforms and heraldry book the same way that these guys are. Light Scab's Plague Pack are the new Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, and for a long time the Sensor Bearers have really struggled to find a really strong foothold in the competitive meta for the Skaven. With things kind of shifting drastically with this new DLC, these guys might become auto picks. For 200 points over their non ROR counterparts, or regiment renowned counterparts, you're getting 10 additional melee defense, giving you about the exact same melee defense as a Storm Vermin with Sword and Shield. In addition to that, the real awesome thing about this unit though is that it's aura, demagoguery. Now, this projects a 40 meter aura around the plague pack that grants all units immune to psychology. And that's that's so huge. It is so huge in an army that is famously terrible with their leadership. And they have mechanics built around how terrible their leadership is, aiding them in retreating. You know, like this guy right there, scurry away. <laughs> but on top of that, they're badass looking. Like, look at these things. Here, let's get a good, let's get a good zoom in on them. And they're very standout members of the Regiment Renown cast. You know, my personal favorites are the last on this list, but they're still rad nonetheless. Now, what about the history of these? You know, these festering, flea-ridden little shitlords? Well, fear not. We have a direct entry from Uniforms and Heraldry that we can dive in on. Light Scab's Plague Pack are amongst Clan Septic's most disgusting warriors. Their fur is matted with contagions, and their skin is covered with boils and bubos. Lightscab commands his regiment and ha with hacking, phlegm-filled shouts, and he is so eager to spread disease in the name of the Horn Rat that he has even been known to lead his regiment from the front. Plague Pack are the, the Plague Pack are believed to have been responsible for the outbreak of bleeding eye rot that decimated the population of the Empire City of Nuln. Closing our chapter on the Poop Pack, let's talk about the most elite of all Skaven foot soldiers, the Albino Council Guard of Stormbermen. Now, these rats are whisked away at birth, you know, noted, of course, for their white fur. Look how disgusting they look. I can't even finish my sentence without looking at, like, those eyes are just glazed over and they're just twitching nonstop. But they were then uh, trained by the Council of Thirteen, the ruling caste of the Skaven. Now, Skaven are generally known for their, you know, cowardice or deceitful nature. This is bred out of the Council Guard. Instead, you have a level of discipline and obedience that is completely unheard of from Skaven. These white-furred lab rats act as the personal bodyguard of any member of the council that is in particularly good standing. 
and it's looked upon with a, a measure of fear uh, because you know if the council member has the guard with him that means that rats or that rat in specific has the blessing or the direct blessing of the council of 13. In another interesting factoid the entire council guard is mute this is very similar or very akin to the phoenix guard of the high elves who all take a vow of silence or a vow uh, to be a mute um, just so that they don't ever talk about how they have seen their own demise kind of a crazy thing but now what's cool is that this all makes a direct translation to their in-game stats. Uh, they have a whopping 100 leadership and an absolutely massive 44 uh, melee defense. But in addition to that, you're paying 300 more points for access to Guardian for any of your lords and heroes. Bet on that. Um, by the way, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I thought that Guardian was a passive ability that always affected everyone. It is exclusive target if unit is a lord or hero. So don't make the same mistake that I have clearly been making for a long time. Also, this unit is unbreakable. Again, very playing heavily into this. So it just kind of fits right into that narrative of these guys defending the Gracier warlord engineer in question, which while also being unflinchingly loyal. Not unlike my roommate, who still fucking owes me for our last trip to Korean barbecue. Rob, if you hear this, pay up, motherfucker. Now, we're starting to get into some more um, obscure references to the lore after these guys here. Everything up to this point has been in the Uniforms and Heraldry book, but let's now segue into the Rattling Guns with, with again, a little bit more of an obscure or lore, pre obscure lore reference, reference, references going forward. The rattling Gun Teeth Breakers isn't necessarily a specific regiment renown, but more the nickname given to the gun by Skaven Clan Rats that are kind of cut down by the scything bullets from these inventions of Clan Scryer. And here's an excerpt from the entry in the 7th edition army book on the origins of the Rattling Gun. The Rattling Gun is more than capable of producing a true surplus of firepower. If such a thing were possible, a solid burst from a Rattling Gun is more than enough to scythe down a charging unit orc boy boys, mid-gallop, and even put a dent into the largest unit of Clan Rat warriors, although this is often called accidental shooting. Clan rats are refer to units slain by the rattling gun as teeth breakers, as the flesh tends to be riddled with dozens of the lumpen glowing bullets. But what does 200 extra points get you for this regiment of renown? And I'm glad you asked. A whopping 72 weapon strength is what it gets you, so a total of 412. This is huge in addition to the suppression mechanic that slows things down as they tar charge towards you or towards the unrelenting guns of the Skaven. In addition, let me actually get, there you go. In addition, you'll get access to a concealment bomb so you can better displace these guys after they start to get focused by range fire or when you see an impending charge a ways off. Get on that one as well. Um, it's really a cool mechanic and very scaveny to help get these guys into either a better position or out of harm's way. And you get three charges on it, so it's got a very nice um, Duration, 67 duration, 67 dur 67 second duration. Jesus Christ, you think I would never, I've never spoken before. Also, though, it has a 90 second recycle, so it's a, a quite a quick recycle, and you can use this um, to really get these guys, like I said, out of harm's way. Since we're talking about the weapon teams, though, it only makes sense to discuss Natty Bubo's Sharpshooters, the regiment of renown Warlock Gisales. And I'm not even going to beat you off on a bush or whatever the fuck the saying is. Uh, let's dive right into another 7th edition army book excerpt. The formidable Warlock Gisale teams have been a staple of the Clan Scryer arsenal for ages. They were first reported on battlefields not long after the earliest clash with dwarfs of the World's Edge Mountains. Ambitious warlock engineers studied captured dwarf handguns and, in their own rat-fiend way, further perfected the design. Early models used scavenged parts, but soon the distinctive long-barreled weapon emerged. Naturally, Warpstone played a key role in the new Skaven versions, appearing in the bullet, the firing mechanism, the warplock, and even the gunpowder itself, which is laced with the unnatural substance. The shape and barrel length have improved through the ages, but the weapon remains its same deadly self. Many clans claim the reputation of being the best shot, but legends tell of a sharpshooter, Natty Bubo, of Clan Moors, who could reportedly put a shot through the telescope of an onlooking dwarf engineer at a distance of well over 7,000 paces. As the story goes, the dwarfs were too stubborn to admit the Skaven had outranged them, so dwarf after dwarf lined up to look through the glass lens scope, or glassless scope with while Natty racked up a large tally. 
So it definitely kind of creates this aura of that enemy at the gates level of cinematic sniper we see in movies, which is, is really cool and plays heavily into the in-game mechanics for Natty Bubos. Um, 1,100 points, 200 points more than their non-regiment renowned counterpart, you gain a minor stat bump for weapon damage, melee defense, and the such. But the real winner here is the ability to snipe and stalk. Natty Bubos can fire from 300 range without the enemy being able to see them and counterfire their position. That's a huge benefit and forces you to engage the Skaven to pull out the location of this shield breaking AP sniper unit that can wreck large creatures and tier 3 units alike. Let's pivot away from things on claws and onto things on wheels with our first siege engine regiment renown of this video, it gets Zap Zap. Now this is one, this one will be a, a kind of a quick entry because there are no real lore references for such a device. Ica Claw didn't have a personal warp lightning cannon that he would pet in the deep night and go, my precious, it calls to me. Zap, yap, yes, yes. Uh, the zap is the name references the many misfire charts across the editions of the Skaven. In fact, charts that aren't even warp lightning cannons have zap as part of their misfire. Uh, the tabletop version of the Skaven had a lot more random factors, with almost everything having some form of misfire chart that would lead to frustration and hilarity in, in the tabletop. But mechanically, this thing is an auto pick for so many matchups and scenarios. With a game that is so heavily based off of magic and the abilities of legendary lords to help gain an edge in combat, Zap, the Regiment Renown's ability, adds 15 seconds to the ability charge for each hit of the weapon stacking up too. So for 200 points, you get the ability to heavily negate abilities like Wah while also doing significantly more damage with a 55 weapon strength increase. In addition to that, this thing, it's kind of hidden there, but you can see that it has bonus versus large and then it does have AP. We have over this, we can get a breakdown of those. In fact, 70 uh, bonus versus large, 20 AP from um, the explosion and 260 AP from the actual direct shot. But this thing can be really great at focusing down Lords, um, especially like Marathi, who has the ability, who has bound abilities, I'm sorry, that would then get hit with this recharge. So this recharge ability is gonna be so strong in the competitive meta. Um, even in campaign, you can use this to great avail, uh, making sure you get rid of any kind of bound character's abilities, or at least negating them so that you can get a better or a stronger upper hand. Moving on to the second to last machine of destruction on this list, the Dwarf Thing Menace is the regiment renown of the newly added Doom Flare. Now, much like the Warp Lightning Cannon, there isn't any specific lore pertaining to a named Doom Flare. Instead, this is referencing the origins of the Doom Flare itself. During a particularly prolonged siege through the tight and narrow tunnels on the underworld, or underway, a throng of dwarfs held a passageway utilizing a shield wall and, uh, you know, pig tallow from their disgusting beards. But a named clan, or an unnamed clan scryer engineer, developed the Proto Doom Flare from a scavenged gyrocopter, such as the, you know, the steam engine, the, the rotor blades, and scraps of metal, just all sorts of pieces from it. The result was a charged metallic ball that thundered its way down the passageway, electrifying, buzzsawing, and destroying dwarf things it touched. So, you know, a rat ball on steroids. Now, the in-game Regiment Renown gives us a nice little stat buff to both melee defense and attack, but there are two big standout additions to the Dwarf Thing Menace. For 200 points, you're getting the ability to innately cause fear which is lovely as this thing will be rear charging, flanking, and smashing through all manner of infantry. But arguably the biggest trait is the ability to sunder armor on top of their already heavy 95 weapon strength, 65 of which is AP and 26 being anti-infantry. Oh, there we go. Now, this thing is extremely hard to hit. As of the recording of this video, the Doom Flayer's hitbox is very small. Um, so by the time that the, we actually see launch, this might kind of change things, guys. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that. This is, you know, probably going to change by now because we've, we've all said as far as any of the, uh, the other YouTubers, any of the other um, people from the Everchosen have said, hey, it's like overpowered level small hitbox. But it makes it pretty impossible to shoot them down or even lock them down in, in combat. You know, it takes a very concerted effort to get this true menace off the battlefield. Now it's time for the last unit in the Skaven roster, the Wheels of Doom Regiment of Renown, Doom Wheel. The lore for this thing reaches pretty far forward into the end times for the Doom Wheel Brigade. This was a three-wheel, a three-wheel wheel squad led by Warlock Engineer Splicer Crix. 
Essentially, he reconfigured the base Doom Wheel model and was able to greatly increase its power yield. Now, this might not be the exact origin of the Wheels of Doom, but as we discuss the mechanics of the Regiment Renown, it seems to make a lot of sense. Because for 200 points, you get a gigantic increase to the range firepower of the Doom Wheel, from 79 to a whopping 203, with Ikaclaw's Doom Wheel being 234. In addition to that, you get a pretty good increase to your melee defense, increasing it to 44 making it the highest melee defense of any chariot style unit in the game. I think the Wheels of Doom is going to be an absolute auto pick for most armies because of the staying power and shooting power of the already considerable damage of the Doom Wheel. In addition to that, these two last entries mark my absolute favorite additions to the Skaven roster. I mean, take a look at all that electric blue piping and lightning jumping off them. It's just fucking sick. Like, look at that. I, I put both of them right here because I knew I was going to do this. <laughs> like, I love the effects on these things. And there's a lot of really cool stuff with the Lizardmen as well, but these guys really just kind of, they, they drive it home for me. Woo, I love them. All said and done, that kind of sums up our Skaven here. We will be doing a video on the Lizardmen, but I really wanted to kind of put these guys in their own video. We could kind of go over them as a team, as a cohesive unit. Um, from all these entries here, and you can see that actually these first front three um, are all the ones from the uniforms and heraldry book for the Skaven. But as we kind of move through the back line, we talk about these, uh, the Teeth Breakers, we talk about <clears throat> the Dwarf Menace thing, which is, is right over there. <laughs> we talk about Natty Bubos, we talk about Zaps. All these things are these custom creations by Creative Assembly, who was kind of just kind of squeeze things out of the lore here and there. And I really appreciate that, I really like that. Um, I think it's a little bit harder when you're not dealing with an army like the High Elves, which have so many entries of so many units across the end times, with the Pure Main Company, but with the Heraldry book, with things like the, um, the Sentinels of of Mothlon, or the the the, the, the Guardians or, or Wardens of Avers, whichever the one the uh, the the Lyrian Reavers are. <laughs> so my brains are shit right now. But there are so many great things coming with this DLC, and I think the biggest thing is, of course, adding Regiments Renown to the Lizardmen to the Skaven, things that I've needed for so long. And we've seen with the Everchosen how that has really already shaken up the meta for these two units against the grander units as a whole, and really have really given them a good place in the power curve. So I'm very excited for things to kind of come fully out and come fully released here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and you got a really good idea of some of the origins of some of these units that you're soon about to delve into nonstop in the coming months. But as always, guys, thanks so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.